Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Monday, the 11th of April. I'm Derek Clark. I'm joined this morning by Johnny McFarlane. Johnny, how are we getting on? Good, mate. Good. Looking forward to discussing the weekend's action and some positivity, hopefully, for a wee yeah. For what feels like a wee change in recent weeks. Yeah, a much-needed win yesterday. And before we look, look at events in Paisley, folks, if you're watching us on YouTube, if you hit that subscribe button, it means you'll never miss a video when we go live. And thousands of you are now subscribing, so thank you very much for doing so. And also, loads of you are now subscribing to the Rangers Review site, which is very much appreciated. We've still got that terrific offer on just now, just one pound for two months worth of content. Now, that not only that, but you also get entered into a prize draw for a tour of Ibrox from a club legend, a tour of Ibrox for four as well, so you can take family and friends with you. Just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe uh, to find out all the details, and I'll pop that link uh, in the comments section as well, folks. So if you hit that, then it'll take you through to the, the subscribe page uh, as well. Um, okay, lots of comments coming in already, Johnny. It was... Uh, uh, very routine when you, you could say yesterday against St Mirren, Giovanni van Bronckhorst made a, a number of changes. Kima Roof netting a, a hat trick, two headers and a, 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 a strike from, from close range. Uh, apart from that, Aaron Ramsey, of course, started. Um, uh, Bona Barisic came back in at left back, which, which good to see him. Uh, and he looked back to his normal self uh, as well. Rangers scored that early goal from Kima Roof. Fantastic uh, ball in from James Tavenier, met by Ryan Kent. He lofted the ball in. And Roof made no mistake heading into the, the bottom corner. Uh, Rangers' second goal came uh, just on the stroke of half time. Roof again from the opposite side this time. Tavernier into Roof and he nodded into the uh, far corner. And, and that was a game done as a contest pretty much. And Rangers were on easy street. Roof netted his, his hat trick five minutes after the restart. And then Joe Aribo with the goal of the game, you'd have to say. An absolute worldy from just outside the area, left-footed colour into the top corner. If you haven't seen it, folks, head over to our social media accounts and you can you can have a look at it. Um, much better from Rangers, Johnny. What was your, your your main takeaways from the game? Yeah, no, it was a it was a far better performance from Rangers than they have been giving in recent games. That this could have been six or seven, Derek. Uh, fundamentally, it was a complete domination of St. Mirren and. The attack and play just looked a lot more fluid. And the, the key thing that stood out to me, Derek, was that the final ball into the box finally seemed like it was reaching someone who had an opportunity to put the ball in the back of the net. And Kim Arruf touched on it, actually, with his interview with Rangers TV, which was <laughs> remarkably candid when he sort of made a joke and he was laughing. But you know what? Sigmund Freud says there are no jokes. And uh, he said, you know, finally, finally, uh, in terms of the, the supply to him. And you can kind of understand why he feels that way, because Rangers just haven't been delivering a good quality final ball. Now, this is the thing about Borna Barisic, uh, Derek. I mean, you look at what he can deliver in that final third. And OK, I don't think any of the goals were deliveries by Barisic. Um, might be wrong. Was the third one? Who, who put in the third? The, the assist for the third goal. That yes, came from the right. and Aribo combined yes, in the left hand side. Yes. Sorry, sorry. So Barisic didn't uh, create any of the three goals, but every time he put a ball into the box, it caused absolute chaos. Every time it was close to reaching its man. And that really showed me the difference between Bassey and, and Barisic in terms of that final quality deliver, del delivery. Now, we know Barisic has been outstanding for two seasons, and then this season it's just not happened. And he's rightly dropped out. But yesterday I thought he was right back to his best, and he, he reminded everyone, hopefully, what he can contribute, especially at SPFL level. Just the delivery I thought was deadly. And it would be remiss not to mention two other players, Derek. We've, we've touched on Borna Barisic. But Stephen Davis, I thought, came in and was superb. Yep. And belied discussion about him being on the verge of being finished and, you know, being leaving at the end of the season and all the rest of it. You know, I thought he was really, really terrific when he came on. Gave us, gave Rangers a speed of movement in midfield in terms of the way they, they knocked the ball around. And then on top of that came our roof, obviously. Just deadly. Uh, three chances. I think he probably could have got four or five if he'd been left on. It was yeah. one of those games where the opportunities were coming and you saw... The chances that fell to Diallo, um, Scott Wright later on, I think uh, Roof probably would have buried. So yeah. all in all, 
four nil and a very good day, I think, uh, just at the right time. If there was one player you want to score a hat trick, it's Kmart Roof, isn't it? Because you're going in against Braga and you need goals. So to have him going in fit and firing and absolutely confident, that fills me and it should fill the team and it should fill the fans with confidence because here's a guy we know can hit the back of the net and now he's done it and he should be bouncing going into that game on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope the deliveries are uh, like we saw on Sunday. Um, two negatives, uh, Johnny. Uh, the sight of uh, John Lundstrom holding his groin. He was replaced by Stephen Davis, as you mentioned, uh, and then uh, Phil Hollander coming off uh, just before half time, uh, and we saw also the pictures of him in the moon boot heading to hospital for a scan. It's just been a, a, a terrible season, especially for Hollander in terms of injuries. Um, you just felt so sorry for him heading off. Um, although it was great to see Leon King come on, but um, yeah, so, so such a sorry sight, uh, Johnny. And John Lundstrom will be touch and go. You're just hoping that, uh, that, that the injury isn't as bad as, as what could be, and he's fit and available for Thursday night. Yeah, Gio seemed pretty confident after the game that Lundstrom would make Thursday, or or at the very least had a really good chance of making Thursday. So that's the positive. Um, now, whether or not you actually play him and risk him is another is another thing entirely, because Stephen Davis, once again, proves he can move that ball around really quickly, technically brilliant. If you're looking for a creator, perhaps Stephen Davis is your man for that game. But but that's another argument, and we'll leave that till later in the week because we can yeah. really dig into some detail on that one. In terms of Philip Hollander, there's just no chance he's going to make it, is there? It looks like he's had some sort of serious issue with his foot, like a broken metatarsal or something like that. It's, it's hard to say. Like Maybe it's just bruised. Fingers crossed that's the case. It's been an absolute nightmare of a season for Philip Hellander. And, and as a consequence, Rangers, he's the best defender at the club. In terms of actually box yeah. defending, there is no one better. Now, Conor Goldson obviously is more important. He's, he's a leader. He gives you the attacking aspect of the of the game in terms of his ability to ping a ball out from the back, to bring it forward out of the fence. So Goldson is huge. But in terms of those big games in Europe against Celtic, you'd want Philip Hollander in every day of the week. And you saw that he's a threat at set pieces as well with that goal in the first game of the season. So it's been a real disappointment. And ultimately what you would have to say is, it's been a huge loss and one that's kind of probably a little bit been undervalued. Philip yeah. Hollander is a £5 million international central defender in my view. Yeah. And and those those are missed at Rangers with the squad that that's there. So you really hope that it's just a bit of bruising and that he can be back because next season, with Coldson gone, Philip Hollander's going to be huge and they need to be able to keep him fit. I don't think he's a one of these croc players who's just going to be perpetually injured. I think yeah. it's been a, a bad luck, especially if it's an impact injury. He's fallen awkwardly on his foot. You know, that's not to do with being robust. It's just, you know, a freak of nature. Yeah. But he's, he's going to be very, very important next season. Yeah. Some comments coming in about Leon King. Uh, Johnny William Burns uh, yeah. says Leon King showed his potential going forward. Good to see him uh, get a chance. And uh, another comment came in. Uh, one... Just asking um, from Alexander Cameron. Hi, Alex. Um, do you think Leon King will get more chances because he's part of our future? Maybe being an option next season. What do you guys think? Um, with the injury to Hollander, I think it, I think it was quite telling that Van Bronckhorst caused brought him on. I think with one eye on Thursday, keeping Balogun fresh, um, and I th thought he did well when he came on. It wasn't altogether troubled, you'd have to say, but um, it's good to see him get getting getting game time, Johnny. I think the key thing about Leon King, and I've heard this and I've seen it in the B team, but I've heard it from people who watch the B team closely, he's very technically good. And if you want to be a centre-half today, actually being technically good is probably about 60% of the battle because all the top teams are playing this high line. I'm sure a lot of you will have watched Liverpool, Manchester City yesterday. And what was remarkable about that game was how congested, congested and tight the spaces that the game was played in because both teams were pushing up and the centre halves had to be completely comfortable taking that ball knowing that if they make a mistake their team is beat yeah. um, they are absolutely in serious bother and King looks like he's one of these players that is born for that 
And that's that's huge because that's the way Rangers are going to have to play going forward, and that's will be the way they play going forward. Now, I think as a club, there has needed to be some introspection over the last 10 years about the youth system, the development of players and the pathway. But with King coming in on top of Patterson and Billy Gilmore, obviously, if he'd stayed, would have been a serious feature of this team. You're starting to see serious fruits of the work that was first started, I think, properly by Mark Warburton in 2016-ish, 2015-16, when he came in. He really started to change a lot of things that were that were uh, going on in, in terms of the youth system, started to help implement changes. And I think that's been continued, first by Mark Allen, now by Ross Wilson, and you're starting to see the fruits of that now. But remember, youth systems, you see the work of five, six, seven, eight years ago today. That's how it works. So I think what you're starting to see more and more is the is the fruits of that labour that was that was put in place early doors in the uh, the new board's reign, and I think that will continue. But what Rangers need to do is to ensure that there is a pathway for these talented youngsters into that first team, or they'll bugger off to Bayern Munich, as you're seeing um, with some of the guys from Celtic. The the other talented uh, winger at Celtic, Ben Doak, has just gone down to Liverpool. We saw Billy Gilmore. It's not Celtic only. We saw Billy Gilmore go down to Chelsea. Rangers have to be really, really wary of that. Yeah. Um, and to combat that, you need to offer an opportunity that's tangible for these kids to develop in that Rangers team. Um, yeah. That's why it was sensible to get them on ahead of Balogun, who you need for the game on Thursday. But we need to see more of that. Now, Leon King's only 18, so he doesn't have to come in and, and play... 30 games a season. But I think next season, he absolutely has to come in and play 15 or 20 at least. There needs to be a development. There needs to be a, a tangible example of, of, of a trajectory for players like that. Because Leon King's in high demand, mate. That's the thing. Yeah. We're not talking about someone who, you know, we've got hearts or, you know, we're talking about somebody yeah. that English Premier League clubs are, are interested in. Yeah. <clears throat> so he needs to be given the opportunity now, Derek. That might not be a Rangers. That might be sending him out on loan. But he needs to go somewhere where he's going to get some sort of tangible game time. There's no doubt about that, and and that can be at Rangers, I think. Um, but you also need to balance that with the demands of Rangers. Um, you know, the, the 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 need to win every game. Like, would you play him against? Braga, of course. I mean, obviously you wouldn't. I mean, that 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 not unless you were pushed into it. Because yeah. if he makes a mistake at eighteen, that's a tough psychological thing to overcome. Um, but everything that I saw from him in the game tells me that he's got a big future. I'm told by people I trust that he's got a big future. I think he he whipped in a cross into the box in the game where I was looking at it going, "Wow, that, that, that's a centre half. That's not bad." It um, was really teasing cross. So. Leon King is no doubt a talent, uh, and yeah. he needs to have a pathway into that team. And whether or not that's going out on loan and coming back or whatever, there, there needs to yeah. be a plan in place for him. Yeah, uh, I like there this comment. Be. There will be. Yeah, I like this comment from William Burns, uh, and he's quite right. Um, Rodrigo Gomez is only 18. He was up against uh, Tavernier on Thursday night. He's a right good talent. And um, you need a manager that, that that's, that's, I would say, brave, but but is happy to, to uh, play on players. I mean, the old saying, if you're... If you're good, if you're good enough, you're young enough, uh, old enough, even. Um, and I think Leon King certainly has all the credentials uh, to play for Rangers. I think there's no question about that. It's easy at Braga, though, mate. With all due respect to Braga, they are the fourth best team in Portugal. Is there going to be, you know, fan demonstrations? You know, is there going to be the yeah. same level of upset that there would be if Rangers are fourth? You know, they can afford to chuck in <laughs> youngsters because ultimately they've got enough quality in their team to be above the dross of Portugal. Yeah. Um, at Rangers, you need to be challenging and winning, and the, the margins are incredibly fine. And this has always been the problem. And it, it's been the problem for my entire lifetime. Only the absolute apex kids get through. Now, listen, a lot of people here will be younger than me 
Uh, some won't be, but the ones that are younger, they'll have heard about Barry Ferguson. They'll maybe even watch Barry Ferguson like Joshua towards the end of his career. Barry Ferguson was nearly out on his backside at Rangers. This is a generational talent who nearly signed for Dundee United. I think it was for something like 100k. Yeah. And could have if he'd wanted to, but decided to stay and fight for his place. So it wasn't like they were Rangers were desperate to put Barry Ferguson at that time on a golden handcuffs deal and, and build the team around him. That took an outsider, Dick Advocat, to come in and say, no, <laughs> that kid, that kid, yeah. he's the fulcrum of this site. Would that have happened under under Walter Smith at the time? I don't probably think so. He could have gone, I think, the season before that. Certainly within the two years before that, um, because Barry, I, I spoke to Barry about it, he told me himself that, that it, there was a possibility to go to Dundee United. So, you know, that that tells you, so if a player that was struggling to get through and kind of got through because there's a change of management and it's an outsider to come in, that really should show you what it's been like for players. And yeah. you look at Charlie Adam, I mean, Charlie Adam, a terrific player, a player who was more than capable of holding his own in the Premier League. And Charlie Adam, a lot of people, a lot of people in the crowd at Ibrox thought Charlie Adam was yeah. hopeless. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Alan, Alan Hutton went down and had a brilliant career in England. And, and you know, he had a, a great six months where everybody agreed he was the blue kafu. Yeah. But he really had a struggle to get in that team. And I think he was, you know, he's a, he's a bit of a target at times because he, he was a bit ropey for the first couple of years that he came into the team. Only these absolute top level guys really get in. And even when they get in, it's hard for them. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, John Fleck, William Burns talking about Fleck, it's, it's another great example. You know, it's it's a real tough team to get through. It's very, very different to Braga. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, t I, I totally agree. Uh, Rangers on tour says uh, Charlie Miller. Yeah. Um, interesting. He, was top tier. he was top shelf when he Well, came uh, interesting he says that. Uh, we've got an interview coming out with Stephen Boyack soon, folks, uh, and he says that Charlie Miller was the no, best he player at Ibrox, he, he really was. He was, uh, he was something else. Um, uh, I think he he hit heights very early on in his career, and it, it didn't sort of sustain it. I think it's fair to say. Um, but yeah, honestly, he was he was absolutely wonderful. Before we finish up, Johnny, yeah, you want to come in here? I was just going to say, I think if Charlie Miller came through today, he would be. Oh. Uh, I think like with the. With the way the game's changed in terms of understanding the psychology of kids, like trying to keep them in a good environment, sports science, all that stuff. I think Charlie Miller, I don't want to go over the top and say like world class, but but definitely Premier League, no, no, no problem oh, yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, I think Charlie was probably, and I don't know if he would admit this as himself. I read his book. Is There's a book on Charlie Miller by Scott McDermott, which is absolutely excellent. You should read it if you've not. Um, and I think probably Charlie would admit himself that if he, you know, if he absolutely zeroed in and focused on his his fitness and his football and all that, then 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 I think he would have had an even better career. And he had a really good career, um, yeah. going around different countries, playing in Norway and places like that. And you know, he was he was loved at the clubs that he played at. Um, yeah. But he really was. I mean, he was he was outstanding as a kid. Outstanding. Yeah, he certainly was. Um, before we finish up, just a, a, a couple of comments came in, Johnny, with regards to Joe Aribo. I mean, it was an absolutely yeah. sublime goal. Ross McLean yeah. says, uh, hoping that Aribo's goal yesterday strikes some motivation for the rest of the season. Unreal talent, but it's struggled to show it recently. That was more like Joe Aribo uh, yesterday. And, and I want to just caveat against St Mirren are a poor side. They're struggling at the bottom end of the... Uh, I say the bottom end. Yeah. They're on a horrendous run and they need to be looking over their shoulder, I think, if, if that continues. Um, but that was more like the Joe Rebo that we know all know uh, he can play and it's <coughs> up to him to show on Thursday if he can continue that forward in, in, a, in, in a match of such magnitude. Yeah, it was an absolutely brilliant take and shot, wasn't it? He didn't yeah. even look at the goal. Yeah. It was just a wonderful strike. Keeper had no chance. One of the goals of the season, without a shadow of a doubt, and you hope that it just gives him that impetus, Derek, to push on and show what he can do once again. Because there's no doubt on talent, Joe Aribo is up there with anything in yeah. this league. No doubt at all. But he has to grab games by the scruff of the neck. I remember Stephen Gerrard talking about him and saying, you know, he's a big guy. He's, I think he's 6'2", six 6'3". Six and he needs to show that power. He needs to get angry. Because if you combine that 
with the level of skill that he has, with his shooting, with his passing, with his trickery, you've got the absolute complete attacking midfielder there. Yeah. But it's unlocked that. I still think he's a number 10. That's what I think he needs to play every game. Um, I know he can play out on the right and it, and it helps fill a slot because Rangers just haven't been able to in the transfer market adequately fill that slot. Ahmed Diallo looked like he could be potentially on paper. The answer to that, it's not worked out. Um, I don't particularly blame Scott Wilson for that, uh, Ross Wilson for that, um, because I think we, when we were discussing this video on transfer deadline day, thought it made absolute sense that it was a great signing. Yeah, And it, it's great to look back on hindsight and say, well, it's not worked out, but Given that, um, Aribo sometimes is going to have to play there because you have to get him in the team. It's But as Jonathan Holmes has just said, look, he's not a wide yeah. player. He's absolutely right. He's a number 10. If you want to get the best out of Joe Aribo, you have to play him behind the strikers and give him the freedom to go and express himself. Yeah. Um, but he's a, he's a wonderful player. And you just hope that this gives him that kind of injection of confidence that will spur him on to really go out and make a difference. Because Derek, make no mistake... Right, this this week that we're going into now, starting today, the seven days from today, it will define Giovanni Van Bronckhorst's Rangers oh, yeah. career. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, yeah. I think getting to the semi final of the Europa League would be an absolutely outstanding achievement, but we've also got to accept real politic and realistically. Rangers managers cannot be getting battered by Celtic week in, week out. There has to be a real bounce back against Celtic. I think we saw his team get pulled apart at Parkhead. There was improvement at Ibrox. I thought Celtic still shaded it and were the better side. Yes. I think we need Rangers to go and be the better side at the very least. Yeah. Um, for, for Van Bronckhorst to have the confidence the Rangers fans... Um, it's it's terrible timing to take over when he took over because when things go wrong, you're under pressure without even having your own team, and that's. Yeah. But we just have to. We live in Glasgow. Yeah, we live in the real world, and we know that he's he's got a lot of work to do. And if he can go ahead and pull something out, I think there'll be a completely different um, feeling, a different viewpoint, a different attitude in these videos and talking to fans and from pundits and media commentators next week. But if it doesn't happen, I think it's going to be a very, very, very difficult six weeks for Rangers as a club and Giovanni Van Bronckhorst as a manager. Yeah. Uh, I've got a piece on the website this morning, folks. Just just pretty much uh, summed up what Johnny was saying. I'll put <coughs> the, the link in the comment section so you can have a look at that uh, in your own time uh, and just touching on, on Aribo of course he scored that absolute beauty against Braga the last time at Ibrox remember that sparked that um, when Rangers came back from 2-0 down so more of the same on Thursday please Joe uh, that would be very much appreciated um, before we go remember just a, a quick reminder if you've not subscribed to the, the Rangers review just one pound for two months worth of content and you also get entered into a prize draw for a tour of Ibrox with a club legend for four so it really is a fantastic offer just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe um, we'll be back again tomorrow morning but until then enjoy the rest